Hey everybody, let's talk about using Zoom for recording podcasts. I know many podcasters use Zoom and they recommend it for recording podcasts. Maybe you're using it because you're familiar with it or maybe you think it sounds just as good as Riverside, StreamYard, or the others. It's really kind of difficult to make a switch when you can't really appreciate what the other side offers. When I sat down to plan out this episode, it was going to be more of a Riverside versus Zoom thing. But I was talking to the developer of Boomcaster, and he talked about how so many podcasters don't understand the reason why local recordings are important. I can talk about how platforms like Zoom, Teams, Google Meet result in lower quality recordings, but I'm sure you've already seen or heard it all before. So in this video, I'm going to demonstrate why Zoom isn't the best choice for recording your podcast. For this video, I'm recording three different ways. I'm recording locally using QuickTime for video and Hindenburg for audio. I'm recording locally using Riverside, and I'm recording locally to my laptop using Zoom. I'll be switching between recordings throughout the video so you can see and hear the differences. To remove any bias, I will simply refer to feed A, B, or C in the lower third to denote which clip is playing at any given time. I will reveal which clip is which at the end of this video. Let's start with the most obvious. Zoom just was not built for podcasters. If you take a look at Zoom's website, you won't find any mention of podcasting anywhere on it. Zoom, it was built for business meetings and conference calls. This means their priority is on reliability and not necessarily on quality. That reliability comes in the form of making files as small as possible to minimize dropouts and freezing. That's not good for podcast quality. I've seen many podcasters who use Zoom mention that they're happy with the quality. I've seen some people mention that if you set Zoom up right and use the local recording feature, that's the same as what you get with Riverside, StreamYard, and other podcast-based platforms. I want to talk about the local recording function on Zoom. Zoom uses local recording in a different way than podcast first platforms do. Platforms like Riverside and StreamYard, they record each person locally on their own computer and then upload those recordings to their servers for us to download. What this means is if I'm recording an episode with you, your video, your audio, they're being recorded on your computer or your phone, your device. My audio and video are being recorded on my computer. These local recordings are then uploaded to the service for us to download. With Zoom, local recording means all of the recordings are being made on the host's computer. Let's use the same scenario I just went through. With Zoom, local recording means all of the recordings are being made on the host's computer. Let's use the same scenario I just went through. With Zoom's local recording feature, my audio and video is being recorded to my computer. Your audio and video is being recorded to my computer. This means your audio and video is being sent to Zoom's server and then to my computer. That's a lot of travel and it increases the odds of glitches and lost data. The shortest path is usually the best path if you are looking for audio quality or video quality. Now that we understand the difference between local recording, let's take a look at the actual quality of the recordings. I want to show what you are losing in terms of audio quality when you are using Zoom or even Riverside. For this, I'm going to do a null test. A null test is, it's a simple test that shows if two files are identical, and if they aren't, what is missing from one of them, or what's different. Basically, you flip the phase of one file and play it back with the original. 
If they're identical, the two files will null and there will be silence. I'll demonstrate this in logic. Here we have our local clip. Hey everybody, let's talk about using Zoom for recording podcasts. I know many podcasters use Zoom and recommend it for recording podcasts. We don't need to play the full clip. What I'm going to do now is I'll duplicate this file, and when I play both tracks back, you'll hear that they're both in sync with each other. Hey everybody, let's talk about using Zoom for recording podcasts. I know many podcasters use Okay, so they're both in sync. Now I'll use Logic's Gain plugin to flip the phase on the duplicated track. Listen to what happens when I flip the phase. Hey everybody, let's talk about using Zoom for recording podcasts. I know many... We get complete silence, and we can verify this with our analyzer. Maybe you think it sounds just as good as yard or one. This tells us the files are identical. They cancel or they null each other out. Now that we understand the null test, let's test the Riverside and Zoom files. Let me get rid of this track and we'll test out the Riverside track. And I should note that I've applied loudness normalization to these files, so they are all the same loudness. This is important to the null test because any loudness differences will prevent a full null. Just like in the first example, I'll start by playing both tracks together, and then I'll flip the phase on the Riverside track. Hey everybody, let's talk about using Zoom for recording podcasts. I know many As you can hear and see, these files almost null completely. I think we nulled down to about negative 65, negative 70 LUFs, which is pretty close to being nearly identical. And to me, this dispels the internet myth that Riverside's local recordings or any browser-based local recordings are somehow inferior to those made locally by recording into a DAW. Now let's move on to the Zoom recording, which I must admit was more of a challenge than I'd expected, but I guess I really shouldn't have been surprised by that either. The first thing is I could not get the Zoom recording to stay in sync with the local recording. You can hear as I play these two tracks together that they start out in sync and then quickly move out of sync. Hey everybody. Let's, Let's talk, talk about, about using, using Zoom, Zoom for recording, for recording podcasts. podcasts. I, I know, know many, many podcasters, podcasters use Zoom and recommend it for recording podcasts. Maybe, maybe you're using it because you're familiar with it. Or maybe, maybe you, you think, think it sounds, sounds just as good as Riverside, StreamYard, or one of the others. You know, it's, it's difficult to make a switch when you can't appreciate or hear what the other side has to offer. You can clearly hear that, as I mentioned, the audio isn't out of sync, but not only is it not in sync, it's not even consistent in its out of syncness. It starts out being ahead of the local file or appearing to play back faster, and then in other sections it is behind the local file, and sometimes it comes back to being almost perfectly in sync. What this means is a null test is impossible. When I was trying to get the files synced up, I noticed that Zoom had already flipped the polarity of the file. And you can see that in the asymmetry in the waveform. On the local and Riverside recordings, the negative or the lower half of the wave has more energy. You can tell that because the wave is taller on that side. On the zoom track, the positive side of the waveform has more energy. There are some other visible differences if you zoom in on the waveforms. 
but they're tough to describe, and I'll just kind of leave it at this. Zoom does change your audio, even with the advanced high quality settings used. And just to play the raw Zoom audio so you can hear it, there are some artifacts. Hey everybody, let's talk about using Zoom for recording podcasts. I know many podcasters use Zoom and recommend it for recording podcasts. The most obvious ones are right here on podcasts or recording podcasts. So that's Zoomitis at its core. Since we can't do a null test, let's take a look at things in Rx where we might see some differences. First, you can see that even with the noise reduction turned off in Zoom, it's still applying a good amount of noise reduction. The other thing you might notice is the reduced frequency range on the Zoom recording. While the local recording extends to 24,000 Hz, the Zoom recording stops at 12,000. While this is going to be barely noticeable, especially to older ears, Zoom's audio quality is kind of death by a thousand cuts. Each one contributes to the reduced audio quality as we go through the post-production process. Since we can't do a null test with the Zoom recording, I've tried to recreate the Zoom recording to the best of my ability. I've cut out all the frequencies above 12K, and I've rendered the file as a mono AAC at 128 kilobits per second, which gives me the same file size as the Zoom recording, though I have no way to reproduce the processing that Zoom applies. So this is kind of an idealized version of a Zoom file. But it does allow us to do a null test to hear what the lossy compression is removing and doing to our audio. Okay, so here's the, the Zoom recreated file, the AAC at 128 bits or 128 kilobits per second. Hey everybody, let's talk about using Zoom for recording podcasts. Doesn't sound so bad. Let's do a null test with our local recording. Hey everybody, let's talk about using Zoom for recording podcasts. I know many podcasters use Zoom and recommend it for recording podcasts. As we can see, we're nulling down to, I don't know, maybe negative 45 lefts, and we're hearing some noise that is following the speech. The thing to keep in mind is we don't use the Zoom files as is most of the time. We're going to be applying our own processing and then rendering that mixed episode down to an mp3. So let's render this file down to an mp3 at, let's go 96 kilobits per second, and hear what that sounds like. Hey everybody, let's talk about using Zoom for recording podcasts. Again, it doesn't sound so bad, but let's check this out against our local recording and our null test. As we can see, the MP3 encoding flipped the phase on us, so we don't need to use the plugin. So let's listen to what's being removed in our Zoom recreation. Hey everybody, let's talk about using Zoom for recording podcasts. I know many podcasters use Zoom and recommend it for recording podcasts. So we're only nulling down to negative 29, negative 30 luffs or so. and. What we hear sounds pretty close to my speaking voice, especially compared to kind of the noise that we were losing with the initial AAC conversion. I'm sure you might be asking yourself though, wait a minute, don't we compress our WAV files to MP3 for our episodes? Wouldn't that have the same impact? Well, let's find out. Here's our local file rendered to 96 kilobits per second mono mp3, and we're applying the null test. So we're nulling down to negative 42, negative 43 LUFs. 
And what I'm hearing is it's similar to the first generation AAC render. I'm sure you've heard the advice about not making copies of copies. This is why. This is what we're doing when we start with lossy compressed files and then subject them to a second round of lossy compression. That second round, we're losing a lot more audio. We're losing a lot more of the voice. So to sum up, this test shows us why we want to start with the highest quality uncompressed audio files and just how much audio we are losing when using a good quality Zoom recording once that episode is edited, mixed, and rendered to MP3. And that's not even counting all the artifacts and other Zoomitis symptoms and how applying dynamic compression can make the audio sound even more brittle than this example and increase those artifacts. Now that you've heard the difference between a local recording and what you get from Riverside and Zoom, is there a difference to you? Do you feel that that difference is going to matter to your audience or your client's audience? Keep in mind, this is kind of a best case scenario with Zoom. I'm using headphones and good equipment in a good room. This is not usually the case with most Zoom-powered podcasts, and it's the reason that I won't take on clients who insist on recording with Zoom. It's just too fatiguing for me to listen to when editing, and I want to work with clients who value audio quality. As promised, here's the reveal of which clip is which. Clip A was Riverside, clip B is local, and clip C is Zoom. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you have, please like it, and if you know any podcasters who are still using Zoom, please share it with them. And if you're looking for other ways to improve your recordings, check out this video up here where I discuss five ways to improve your audio without being an audio engineer. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you next time.